think we can get up the steps a little bit. You can see. Oh, here we are. This right? is it. Yeah, it's quite magnificent, honestly. So the hospital dates back to the late 1800s, actually. It's called Riverside Hospital, and it was managed by the city of New York as a ward for tuberculosis patients. At the time, treatment involved isolation, so this is a perfect place for that sort of thing. The place is North Brother Island. And while it might look isolated, it's less than a mile from Manhattan. You can see Lower Manhattan over there. We were incredibly lucky to get a chance to visit. Rikers Island is directly in front of us. Since North Brother was abandoned in the 1960s, few people have set foot here. And there's North Brother Island right there. And yet it's just a short boat ride from the Bronx. We came here to see what happens when nature is allowed to take over. This is the largest building on the island. And but first, we poked around these relics of the island's human history. This was the former TB sanitarium. So I see. All of the x-ray rooms, like operating rooms, facilities like you'd expect to see in a hospital. On the left, though, is where people lived, honestly. Their staff housing was here, and we'll pass another one on the left that was a dormitory. The most famous patient of North Brother Island was Typhoid Mary. She worked in the food industry, I believed, and you know, they brought her out here. She actually escaped once. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she escaped, went back to New York City, still got back into the food industry. Oh, that's probably terrible. continued to contaminate people. So finally they brought her here, really kept an eye on her after that. I hope so. Yeah, and she ended up dying on the island. So here is a former recreational area. These are actually tennis courts. And now what we have is a forest on top of a tennis court. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> this, I believe, is the former nurse's home. Also crumbling, there's a tree on the roof here that you can see. So We almost passed this. I know, I know, Tell sorry, sorry. So right here is the morgue. It was a crematorium. Another thing that's interesting is that the island generated its own power. They brought coal onto the island. Uh -huh. They had a coal house, you know, really boilers. Everything was here. The island had two uses after it was a hospital, though. It was used as GI housing. Families lived here. Oh, really? OK. Yeah, so I think at that time it was really kind of an idyllic place. Away from the city, removed. Oh, there were wow. lawns. Okay. Um, it was beautifully landscaped. You can imagine people picnicking yes. on the lawns. And then after that, it was used for youth drug rehabilitation. Okay. So really, the island has always been a fully functioning community. I think that's cool. Now it is its own little community still, but right. for native a plants, wildlife. wildlife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happened when nature was left to its own devices? From what I understand about the buildings, you know, the plants are really contributing to their destruction. They destroy the masonry. Right. Uh, yeah, all of the glue in between the bricks just will come apart. Plants are incredibly strong. Some of the plants that reclaim North Brother Island don't belong here or anywhere in New York. This is kudzu. It's an invasive vine. It's from Asia, but it has really invaded the American South. It's a really rare invader in New York City, actually. And I'm not sure how it got to North Brother Island. It's amazing. And miraculously, without any human intervention, many native New York plants found their way back here. Oh, here. This is actually somewhat of a rare plant, okay, which is good. grape fern. It's kind of funny, you know, like how something like this gets here and it keeps coming back year after year and, you know, just nestled in with the poison ivy. Two great native species. Yeah, right. I know, I love this. I love it. We also have sugar maple here, which is great. That's a native species. Over time, you know, it seems like we're moving toward a native canopy here. And that's just sort of happening on its own? Yep. All of this vegetation helped attract the island's more recent residents. After humans left, several bird species colonized North Brother and its neighbor, South Brother Island. What the island offered these birds was it wasn't inhabited. So it was ideal. It had buildings, which are structure. It had trees, which are structure. And it had a whole river full of fish waiting to be eaten. 
So it provided everything that the birds needed. Now, the New York Parks Department is coming out to the island to make the birds feel more at home here. We've been working for about two and a half years to mm -hmm. remove invasive plants, and we've planted a lot of native trees. That's what we're standing in right now. Okay. Here we have a sumac that we planted. There's a dogwood over there. We have American holly, and we're really aiming for a low-growing, thickety structure because that's what the birds like to nest in. So are there plans at some point down the road to let people come and visit this? Not really, honestly. I think that it would be very cost prohibitive to shore up the dilapidated structures, create safe landing for a boat, but also the sensitivity of the island as wildlife habitat, as a natural space within our you know, dense urban landscape. The value that it provides in that way, I think is great. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following.